um, years and years and years ago, which kind of reflects where we're able to go right now. Was it Newton who said on the shoulders of giants? I think it was. So in that, with that in mind, have a look at what Mark Twain said and really understand why the 25th of July 2016 might be a very important day for you. He said, the two most important days in your life are the day you're born, it's obviously a very important one, and the day you find out why. Hopefully with that little exercise through the iPhone, you will just work and work and work at that until you find out why. And those of you who work with me, of course, you're like cursed and stuff, you'll be able to go through a literative process to get that. So with that in mind, let me do what I promised to do, which was talk about impact. And, and really, Rob, I think, used this word today, which is why I put that slide up there. At one point, he said something about transforming. So I'm thinking about what does it take to actually transform? So transform, transformation happens when we fall in love with, not when we think it's desirable, not when we think, oh, that's attractive, but when we fall in love with a different version of the future. And we all have different ways of falling in love, I guess, with that future, but I did, you've seen today just what that future can look like. And also remind yourself as well that environment dictates performance. What that means is simply this. Just imagine that, for example, tomorrow we all decided to go and work at Google. Just imagine, Google hired us all. Let's imagine. Show me hands if you think, in fact, if you know, that by being in that environment, we'd all be just that important bit more creative. Show, show me hands if you get that. Environment dictates performance. If that's true, we need to have a look at the environment that we currently, you know, that we go back to, right? Because if it's the same environment, then we may well get the same performance. That's why I asked you what it was that you wanted to write on your mirror. Just that simple change can, in fact, be the catalyst for a whole lot of change as well. So as Rob said in the firm of now, I love these eight things. I really do love them. You know, we've got purpose and but you know, all those centric things. But then it ends up got a nice leg to do that top one and this last one as well. So let's have a look at this impact one. Once again, in terms of transformations, kind of like in terms of connection, I think there's really four interesting things who have to transform. It's not our clients, it's ourselves. We have to transform. Someone once said to me, Paul, um, they've written a book, and they said, Paul, you know a lot of people. Um, I'm wondering if you could get Oprah to have her book. I've just written this great book, uh, how I could get, uh, get my book on Oprah. So, of course, I just pulled out my phone and said, Siri, call Oprah, and spoke. <laughs> <laughs> of course I did. But even if I knew Oprah or someone close to her, I probably would not have connected with them. And here's the reason. The idea is not that you, 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 that you go to Oprah. The idea is that you become so attractive that Oprah comes to you. Show, show me your hands if that, if that makes sense. And that's why this why is so critically, critically important. So transformation happens when we transform ourselves. As a result of that, you cannot help but particularly with all the resources you've got, that you transform your clients. And once you understand what that does, then you'll be talking about transforming your community, the community of which you're a part. And then, like Kirsten, for example, once you understand that, then you'll probably want to be a part of that thing that Rob talked about earlier on called buy one, give one. But I'll talk with you about that in just a little while. So let's quantify this whole thing uh, <laughs> we're talking about. And there are three really important ideas that I want to share with you, plus one that is super important. So don't write them down yet because I'll show you a nice way of writing them down. So in terms of understanding our impact, there are really four things. So, so first of all, we're going to look at the revenue impact that you have and that you will have when I mean, you're part of this, the profit impact, the wealth impact, and that's typically where people stop but I want to go just a little bit further, which is the super important part, which is the freedom and happiness part. Have you noticed that there are a lot of people that chase the dollars, but what's interesting when they chase the dollars, they just keep running away. Have you ever noticed that? Uh, and, and as a result, their freedom and happiness just goes down. Maybe that's not such a good thing, 
So let's take a look at how we can do that. So here's how I'd love you to write them down. Just write them down underneath one another like that. So we've got revenue involved, profit involved, and everything else. Then you've got three columns uh, in each one. I'll show you the columns. The uh, first one, you can fill this in if you like as you go. But I'm going to put some standard things in there, or some average things in there. So we, we look at, as you can see, number of business clients, the average sales revenue of those businesses, therefore the revenue impact that you're having. We then flip that up into the profit impact. We do those three little numbers on it, so you might need a calculator uh, to do this. Then we talk about that profit impact. We talk about, as Michael Gerber once said, the only perfect, the only reason to create a business is to sell it. I'm not sure that's true anymore, but Michael certainly said that, as you know, I'm sure. Um, and then we take that wealth impact thing and we put that up here in the number of, sorry, we don't, we put the number of business clients up there, we multiply that by the number of team members and then we get this thing called the freedom and happiness impact. So, if it's okay with you, is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, good. <laughs> Let's just put some average numbers in there. Now you can work with the average numbers or if you want to, you can put your numbers in there, whichever you feel most comfortable with. So let's say on average, the typical accounting firm has 200 clients, let's just say. The average sales revenue, when we talk with accountants around the world, doesn't seem to matter. They're saying, you know, we're working with small to medium scale businesses, some are big, some are small. But if you average it out, it's around about 500,000 in whatever the local currency is. That's a really bizarre thing to whatever the local currency is. And so if you multiply the 500,000 by 200 quickly, let's see who gets it first. What's the revenue impact? Quickly, how much revenue does that indicate? Quick, 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 come on, we're accountants, come on. Uh, which one? Oh, who, who's, who said a billion? A million. No, 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 no. Multiply those two things together, how much you get? Oh, you get a hundred billion. Who said a hundred billion? Someone down here? Listen, let me just give you a prize. Well done. You have done very, very well. There's a prize for you. Please give the donor a prize. <laughs> okay. So, it is a hundred million, okay? So now we take, by the way, just think about that. Just think about that for the moment. When you go into your office, bang, 100 million if you are running the, those kind of numbers. And I, and I find that most accountants simply don't get that. And part of the reason they don't get that is because they're doing silly things like charging their time in six minute units, which you have to stop. No, seriously, you do. It's killing people. It's killing people. It really is. But more, I don't want to talk about that today, but it is really killing people. Anyway. Do you, do you have, um, what's it called? Beyond Blue, do you have Beyond Blue here? You know, like the, the depression thing, do you have that? Where, do you have like, where you're depressed, you go? I'm None of you have been. Okay, that's okay. I'm okay. Uh, <laughs> the reason I mentioned it is there's some numbers that are pretty interesting around depression and six minute units. Anyway, so, no, they're up, seriously, they're up. So, so let's have a look, we take the revenue impact up there, let's just assume for the moment that the average profit impact is 20%, or the, the profit number, is 20%, so you got the first one right, so now if we take 20% of 100, what do we get? Oh, there's too many zeros here, aren't there? In, in, in Indonesia, where everything is lots of zeros, they get this very quickly. And stuff, right? So the answer is, of course, 20,000. 20 million, I think you both. So 20 million is the profit impact. So just think about that. Just because you've got your tiny little business in or seemingly tiny, wherever it is, that's in effect what you're responsible for, or at least what you can impact. So now let's take the profit impact. So what we do there is we take, bearing in mind the purpose of a business is to sell it, so we take that 20 million. Now, interestingly, um, until about six months ago, I would have said that the average uh, valuation multiple is five. It turns out, I don't know how it is in New Zealand, but in Australia, someone has just done a massive study of some 33,000 businesses that were sold, and they found that the valuation multiple was 2.68. Is that kind of, yeah. But what we know is that when you do it correctly, correctly, and start to prepare the business for sale, then you can get that and way beyond it. So let's just use that as a benchmark. Then of course you get back to that same, well, just think about that. I mean, it's stunning. By the way, how many of us have these numbers up in our mirror? Or, in our office. You know, I think it's interesting if we if we did. Okay? So now let's look at the freedom impact and then we'll build on that, the freedom and happiness one. Um, have anybody, just to illustrate that, 
Has anybody ever had a client who's had a tax problem? Anybody at all? <laughs> 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 yeah. so, so imagine I come to you and I say, I got a tax problem. Imagine. Now, that, if you like, is the symptom of the, of the problem. But just imagine what it's like for me as a business owner, first of all, come and tell you that. But secondly, imagine what it's like going home. Imagine what it's like all the days before I told you that. Just imagine. And all of a sudden, you start to get that when you fix that, you don't just fix the tax problem. You fix family relationships, you fix marriages, you fix births and deaths and all sorts of things, I suspect, right? Yet both in a positive way, I would think. No, no, less deaths, more births. I think that's probably the way that you go. So, so I mean, of course, it's, in other words, this, what I'm trying to get is that this is not about six minute units. It's not about that. It, it, it's, it's about the ripple effect, the impact of what you do. And the, a friend of mine says, his name is Dan Priestley, and Dan says that all entrepreneurs, which means you and it means your clients, are standing on a mountain of value. The problem is that we don't understand that we are. So hopefully this gives you some idea that we are standing on that mountain of value. So if you take the 200 clients, you say on average they've got 10 team members and you forget about the ripple effect that goes from the 10 team members and you forget about the ripple that goes into their families and so on and so forth. You forget about the suppliers. You forget about all of that and just focus just on those 10. Then all of a sudden you've got 2,000 people who are just, in a sense, in, well, not just in fact, they are really, really impacted by the great things that you are doing. And the point that I want to get to you is that it's not just that. That's the minimal impact, if you will, because there's this huge ripple effect that goes beyond that. So let's see if we can quantify that a little better. So we've got purpose-centric, cloud-centric, value-centric, client-centric, don't you love this centric, efficiency-centric, marketing-centric, culture-centric. By the way, how many of us love structure? Do any of us love structure? That is an amazing structure. It's an amazing structure. It's great that someone, Rob and, and Colin and the people just got together and said, hang on, if we could structure this, what would it look like? And if we could move people through this process, what would it look like so that we could guarantee, in a sense, that they get to the end doing awesome things? So, once again, transformation, let's look at it slightly bigger. Transformation comes from ourselves, comes from our clients. By the way, is it okay if I reveal something you don't know about Rob? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, our clients, our community, and this is, see, even that's interesting. Just think about that. You know, when the businesses in your community grow on account of all the great things you're doing with them, that just has an amazing impact on the community. Does everybody get that? You, you really, we've really got to get that. It really does impact the economy in amazing, amazing ways. But there is a way of thinking about that in an even bigger way, which is this whole thing about impacting on our world. And that's where what I do deep, well, part of what I do these days is this thing called Buy One Give One, this extraordinary organization, so that you can actually say, whenever anyone does business with us, meaning you, we make sure that great things happen. And you can choose what those great things are. Let me show you uh, an embarrassed problem. Let me show you an example. Now, Rob has already told you about this e-learning village. Ten years of stuff has already been done as a result of what Rob did. But let me show you something else. And he's done that through the one. This is just one of 856 projects. Now, one of the most interesting things in B1G1 is that we actually track every single solitary cent of that impact. It's never about the dollars. It's always about the impact. So, for example, I can just key in, in fact, I think I did it already. Yes, I think I did over here just to go quick. There you go. So all that is, I typed in panel, as you can see across the top, and I find the panelytics, what we call the direct impact. And so, as you'll see, I can flip across some of these things here. Let me just go back up there. And you can see that it's not the dollars and cents. Everybody seeing it? It's so many days of this went there. Everybody seeing it? It's not about the dollars. But watch this. Watch this. 
I'm just going to go click here, which is Panalytics, and I'm going to ask that instead of us operating alone, we operate together. As, you know, when Rob talks about membership of Panalytics, so let's talk about what happens. And now what we're going to see is what we call the giving connections right here. And what you should start to see, tell me if you're seeing it, you should start to see little green lines. You see all these, all these green lines? And what that is, is all of the accountants who are around the world who are already part of this, right around the world, and all of their giving coming back into the one thing. Does that make, oh wow, you said. Is that astonishing or is that astonishing? It really is amazing. In fact, whilst I'm there, let me show you a little tiny one so you get what's actually happening. Here's a little tiny firm in, uh, in where are they? In Ballina, actually. There I am on their website, just there, and they talk about, in fact, rather than go on their website, let me just do this. Let me just show you because it's a bit easier if I show you here. So, here we go. So that's their website. They talk about giving back. They talk about giving back locally right here. Right? And then, as you'll see, they talk about then giving back in B1G1. There's their map. If we click on that, we'd see what we just saw. And there you see everything. That's in real time, by the way. Now, imagine talking of meeting and purpose, how you would feel working for a firm like that. Do you already get it? It's this, again, this amazing impact. Now, how does that look? When you look, oh, by the way, if anybody wants to know more about that, that's where you can get in touch with me, okay? Paul at b1g1.com. But how does that look in Panalytics? This is the bit that Rob didn't tell you about. So, as a result of all of, oh, hang on, as a result of all of that that you just saw, have a look at this, a staggering 4,057,329 impacts that you are a part of. How does that make you feel? Let me ask the question again. How does that make you feel? Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really, really good. And that's all, of course, because of all of the panelists, people that are part of this, which we so want you to be as well. And part of the reason that we love you to be is this. I saw this quote yesterday, actually. It said, changing the world takes more than, it, more than everything any one person knows. Okay? But not more than we know together. So, it says, let's work together, which is why I so hope that you've looked at all of that analytic stuff today and said, yes, that's part of where we want to go. And way back when, in fact, in 1981, the guy that Rob mentioned today with that idea of the building, remember that he talked about the building and how could you make a building? And, uh, his name is Michael, Michael Shergold. And he came to the first program I ever did. He said, PD, he said, always remember this. The power of any idea is only ever in its implementation. What that means is, if we go away from here and someone says to us, well, how was it? So, oh, there's so many ideas. By the way, how many did get so many ideas? Right? But if they just remain ideas, then we have a little challenge. So what do we need to do with that? Well, we need to understand. See, I think that we are guardians of the future for our children, and for our grandchildren. We are guardians of the future. And we need to understand that what we do now, and I mean now, I don't mean tomorrow, I mean now, links the future to, or sorry, links the present to the future. So you may remember we had this little thing earlier today when we talked about Seth Godin, we talked about the magic of forward movement, is seeing the space not as a chasm, but it's something you can leap towards. I think it's actually easier if you don't even have to leap. Right? So it's actually easier if you just take that little consistent effort just to kind of shift and shift that would say, yes, I'm in. And then over the year, perhaps, then get to where the grass is very definitely greener and where we know it absolutely is greener. So I hope that you've all done that. And here's another reason why I hope you've done that. How many know Peter Drucker? You all know of Peter Drucker, anyway, yes. Probably the best management consultant there has ever been. And just, as it turns out, just over lunchtime, someone sent me a little note, and they said, hey, Paul, did you know that Peter Drucker said this? Now, you might know that Peter Drucker said this, but I didn't. I did check it out, though, and he actually did, did say it. He said, whenever you see a successful business, you'll find someone who made a courageous decision. 
What's interesting is, my, my, my view on that is, it seems really courageous at the time, but when you move forward, it's like, oh, well, that was actually quite easy to do. Do you know what I'm saying? It doesn't, it, it doesn't necessarily seem like it's courageous. So I really do hope that if you haven't already decided to join the Robin team on this journey, you will. Now, as a way of making sure, well, not making sure, as a way of giving you another way of thinking about that, I want you to meet this guy. Um, and you may want to get this video if you have children. This is a guy, his name is Prince, or his, name, his real name is Richard Williams, but he refers to himself as Prince Ea. He is, as in E-A. <laughs> he is an award-winning voice artist, and he just connects in ways that um, it's just amazing how he connects. Um, some people have seen this. They've given it to their kids, their kids have taken it to school, and the headmaster or headmistress has said, can we show this to the entire school? Now, when he talks on this thing, he may not be talking to you. You may not think that he's talking to you, and that's quite okay. But he's probably talking to someone who you know. So in order to get the most out of this, let's just do two things. First thing, quick question, 